2018 was this past weekend, and the game that everyone was holding their breath for was Kingdom Hearts 3, and a release date for the title that's been highly anticipated for 13 years. We got our long-awaited release date, but we got something else that we didn't expect. Something shocking, heartbreaking, and a huge spoiler. The internet and the Kingdom Hearts fandom are losing their minds, and I'm one of these people. At the end of the trailer, Aqua, one of the six playable protagonists in the series, has fallen to the darkness after being trapped in the Realm of Darkness for over a decade. Tetsuya Nomura claims that he's surprised that everyone was surprised. He was intending for the announcement of the Frozen World to be the main surprise, but all anyone cared about was Aqua. Let's be honest, most of the people who are playing Kingdom Hearts right now are adults and teenagers who have been alive long enough to have experienced most, if not all, of the game's initial release and subsequent HD re-releases. Adults and teenagers tend to find Frozen a little overrated and, by now, promoted and talked about ad nauseum. All I have to do is mention one little thing and I know you're going to groan. I'm so sorry, but I'm trying to make a point. Not to mention that we all know that there's a sequel to Frozen coming, so of course the property would be in Kingdom Hearts 3, a game that is adding more Pixar and CG animated Disney movies than any Kingdom Hearts before it. So why is it that Aqua was the only thing anyone took away from that trailer? You see, Aqua is the main character of Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, one of the more popular entries in the series. Even though the plot of the game is shared between the perspectives of the three heroes, Terra, Ventus, and Aqua herself, Aqua is the only one that becomes a true Keyblade Master, and has not only her own 10-hour branch of the story, but has a playable true ending and a bonus secret chapter to play. She also has her own brief game which serves as a demo for Kingdom Hearts 3, and the direct prologue to the game itself. At the end of Birth by Sleep, each of the main characters comes unto a tragic fate which directly leads to the conflicts in the subsequent games, aka nearly the entire series. Terra comes too close to the darkness, and therefore allows Xehanort to take his body as the vessel for his heart, meaning that most every version of Xehanort we've seen since the series started is simply a corrupted and possessed Terra. Ventus must battle with his literal dark half Vanitas, where the two join together and each vies for primary control of their singular body. This union spawns the Kyblade, it's pronounced Keyblade, but I'm calling it Kyblade for simplicity, which Xehanort wants to use to access the celestial body of light and power Kingdom Hearts. Ventus falls into a coma when he defeats Vanitas and shatters the Kyblade. His broken heart then enters Sora's heart in order to survive, but this means that Ventus cannot wake up. Enter Aqua, who tries her best to rescue both of her friends from their fates. She locks Ventus into the chamber of waking in order to protect him and keep his location secret, while promising that she will one day return to wake him up. Afterwards, she finds Terra possessed by Xehanort and attempts to break him of the spell. Terra manages to get his will back momentarily and uses the Keyblade to attempt to evict Xehanort, but instead sends himself sinking into darkness unending. Aqua plunges into the darkness and sacrifices herself by giving her darkness-resistant armor to Terra and sending him back to the surface leaving herself to be trapped in the realm of darkness. However, Terra is still possessed by Xehanort, leaving her efforts ultimately futile. With both Terra and Ventus lost, Aqua's fate is left unknown to the world. No one knows to come and save her. Each time we've seen Aqua sent, she has been wandering the realm of darkness, a plane of existence where darkness thrives and is infinite in depth. The Heartless thrive here and harry her at every turn. She wanders the realm of darkness for a decade, slowly losing her self-identity and her self-esteem, creeping closer towards despair. She sees fleeting images of Ventus and Terra until finally their three hearts connect momentarily, just long enough for her to see Ventus and Terra is able to interact with her, even though he can't see anything except for her. She learns the truth about Terra's fate before Xehanort overtakes him once again, nearly getting the location of the Chamber of Waking from her. Terra fights back long enough for Aqua to be taken away. Only now does someone from the outside find her, Mickey, who is in the Realm of Darkness to find the Kingdom Key D to seal Kingdom Hearts during the first game. Mickey admits he had no idea where she had been all this time, and for a short while, there is hope that she may escape with Mickey since we all know by now that he can escape the realm. However, as Aqua is protecting Riku while closing Kingdom Hearts, she is attacked once again by the Heartless and separated from Mickey. Knowing that her chance to escape has passed and that the two finding each other is unlikely, Aqua speaks an ending dialogue vowing to help others who wander into the realm of darkness, to be their light within the darkness. Thanks to Terra and Mickey, I know what's at stake. I'm not afraid. I will face the long darkness. 
The next time someone wanders into the realm of darkness, I'll be here. A light to cut through all the shadows. I will be their wayfinder. And one day, I'll return to Terra and then. I am Master Aqua. And that's a promise. Her determination has peaked. She has renewed purpose and hope, especially after she discovers that Sora is also fighting to stop Xehanort. For the first time in 10 years, she has a reason to fight and keep herself from fading into the darkness. However, evident from the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer, we discover that in the year or so since then, Aqua has fallen to the darkness, and even possibly been possessed to some degree by Xehanort. The silver hair and yellow eyes are telltale signs of a possession by Xehanort. This means that not only have one of our main characters been turned into a bad guy, it means that Xehanort may finally know where Ventus and the Chamber of Waking are located in Castle Oblivion. Does this mean that Aqua is one of the 13 darknesses that Xehanort is collecting? Will Sora and or Riku be able to save her and by proxy Ventus? These are the reasons why the fanbase is having an aneurysm. Why no one thought anyone wouldn't be taken aback by this reveal is confounding, as going from one scene to another, Aqua goes from determined and at the height of her state in the realm of darkness to the exact opposite as we left her. Mickey. You're too late. The foreshadowing of this happening was redirected by her ending monologue. And sure, Nomura knows exactly how the story goes, so to him it's not a surprise. But maybe he should proofread his work a little bit more in order to avoid narrative contradictions that cause the fanbase to riot. She sacrificed herself to save me? Why did you keep it from me for so long? I had to respect her choice. What about us? You could have given us a choice. We could have gone and helped her. I know. Hey guys, it's Zivaline. Thank you so much for watching this video. I've been a fan of Kingdom Hearts ever since I was a little girl. It was probably one of the very first games that I ever played on PS2. I know it was the first one I ever begged my parents to get me. And that was 17 or 16 years ago. So, six-year-old me is really happy that Kingdom Hearts 3 is finally happening. And since there's a lot of people jumping onto the Kingdom Hearts train right about now, since Kingdom Hearts 3 is overly hyped, I'm thinking about possibly making a series where I try to explain tidbits of the story and maybe important plot points and characters to these people who don't really know much about Kingdom Hearts. I know that a lot of people try to explain the entire story in one fell swoop, but let's be honest, you're never going to truly understand Kingdom Hearts until you play Kingdom Hearts. You're also not going to understand Kingdom Hearts if someone tells you everything in one giant long breath that lasts for an hour. So in little tidbits of information, maybe I can clear things up. If you guys want to give me some ideas of what you want to hear first, let me know. And until then, I'll catch y'all later.